Hello and welcome to the 14th tutorial on how to make a game in, in the XNA. And in the last tutorial, we're going over pathfinding. This tutorial, tutorial, we're going over pathfinding again, but this time we're going to go over threads for the pathfinding. So, threads. Uh, I'm not. If you don't know what threads are, uh, basically every every uh, C sharp pr program starts off with its program.cs, and it creates one thread. So this is the main thread, but we can create multiple threads. So this is right now. This is happening. It's it's compute this game dot run is it's like looping through uh, all this over and over again. So if we create a th another thread, it's going to be a different uh, almost it's almost going to be a, just a different thing by itself running a different program. Not not a program just we can put a method in there and it can run that method so it's really useful if uh... there's like if some methods take a really long time to complete you put it in a thread and uh... you don't have to worry about it, it doesn't slow your other app th your other things down so uh... what we're gonna do is yeah make a thread uh... usually i just create a thread in the program file and then i only have like one or two threads but in this uh... Tutorials. I'm going to have an experiment and have a thread for every enemy. So, we're gonna actually we have to import the thread namespace. So I'm just gonna put uh, using system dot threading. So we can use threads. So we're gonna create a new thread. Private thread uh, t1 or thread. I'm just gonna say uh, t. So, there we go. Okay, so the nice, so the thing with threads is you can give it a method and it'll try to complete that method. Once it's done, complete that method, it'll just stop. So, this is what we're going to do. In our set path method, we're going to do this. Uh, T equals new thread and we're going to put in our method we want to we want to uh do so we want to find the path so actually we're going to create a find path method notice i don't have to put any parameters like this or anything just just put find path and the one thing with the arguments you put in your threads they can't they can only have one argument and that argument has to be an object or an object array. So it's very, very, uh, how can I call it? Particular about that or picky. Uh, so I'm just going to say p dot t dot start to start the thread. So it's running. And over here, I'm going to say if t dot is not alive. So I'm bas basically saying is t not alive. So basically, is it finished? So if it's finished, then I'm just gonna abort it. And if if path does not equal null, so if there actually is a path that was found. Uh, actually, I don't need that. I don't need that. Yeah, that should be good. So if if it's not alive, it's gonna set binding to false. Q equals to false path index equals to zero and pathfinder q equals minus minus this basically just makes sure okay it's not queued anymore it already found the path and it's just setting path index to zero to reset the path okay so now we're going to create our find path method so just create it right here public void find find path and i'm just going to capitalize that right here there we go. Okay. So, in our find path method, we want to do this. We want to do map equals pathfinder dot write map. And what this will basically do is check the whole map and divide it into grids based on the size and the grid size and check if there's any collisions on those grids 
and it just goes through all that. And I'm going to create a new pathfinder. Finder. And finder. Finder equals new pathfinder. And we're going to pass in our map. Or our Boolean. Our Boolean map, which tells us is that space walkable, walkable, or is it not walkable? So I'm going to put uh, path equals finder dot find path. Oops, find path. And this basically just takes that information that we gave it in the constructor. Oops, something went wrong. Oops, we forgot hunter. You have to put in the position and your destination. So basically, what this method does is it takes that information that we gave it, that Boolean map that we gave it, uh, and it takes that information, and after you give it, it's the position you're at and the destination you want to go to or want to find a path to. It takes that and it finds an array or a list of points. So that's what we need. So, uh, this basically executes that on this thread, starts it, and then once it's done, this this method it sets our path. So after that, uh, just a sec. okay. After that, draw update. So that's what it does. So I'm gonna go over it one more time. Set path executes this, starts a new thread. If it already started a thread. If it's not alive and it ended, resets everything, set the path, and yeah. Okay, and actually, set path. Actually, we need to walk to now. Walked, where is it? Move to destination. Right. Step to point. I forgot to return something. Uh, oh yeah, on this method, on the step to point method, just put return false at the very bottom. So if it's not returning true, it just returns false. So that's why it doesn't give you an error. Okay, so okay, so that should be good. Uh, let's go ahead and test this and see what we got. Index was outside the bounds array. Okay, so one thing I think. Let's check this. Okay, I think I know what w went wrong. Okay, so the reason why this is erroring out is because uh, we set the enemy's position to zero zero, which the A star checks all adjacent grids, and one of the grids it does check is one that does not exist which is a uh, negative one by negative one uh, so what we have to do actually is go to our items class and where we create a new enemy I'm just gonna set it anything but zero or anything outside of the screen not outside of the screen yet. anything not outside of the screen so okay All right. continue okay as you can see, he actually looks pretty confused right now, but he's. Have to, I'm going to have to re refine this a little bit more. Why he's going back and forth? Oh, I know why. I know why. I think I know why. Let's try making the grid size 16 smaller. There we go. So as you can see, he's following us in a weird way. I'm going to refine it more, of course, but he will find his way around this wall. Well, actually, we made the grid size way too small, way too small. So actually, I'm going to reset this to 32 because that is the size of the wall. So 
now he's going to try to find us and go around this wall but unfortunately you see everything isn't snapped to the grid and what I mean to this by this is ev all these sprites are 32 by 32 and the grid is 32 so but everything isn't exactly on the dot so the next tutorial we're going to go over that uh, but uh oops I went outside of bounds but other than that thanks for watching and uh, a, a rating is always appreciated, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.